Hello, hello, this is Lars, we're playing KSB Hardcore, and, well, after last mission, I kind of want to do something a bit different, so, uh, I'm just going to leave those guys out there for a little while, they have to wait until they can burn for return, anyway, so, uh, I'm, I wanted to prepare a different approach this time, and, um, so we're shooting up a new uh, payload here, and this is a low carbon orbit device. You'll uh, you'll get to see it very very soon. But um, what I've been thinking actually is that there is some infrastructure that we really should have in place. And one of those thing I things is a refuelable thing around carbon orbits. We could refuel and then boost out. And uh, we also need to test some stuff because, uh, as you saw the last time, we did end up with some problems, actually, well, <laughs> we did end up with a lot of problems, actually, landing. Well, we did land on Tuna, but, yeah, uh, uh, that's another chapter. But we did have some problems making a proper, um, a proper um, Keythane Miner, and so we will have to start thinking about testing some of this infrastructure. I think I went in a bit too quickly without really testing it. Um, and of course, to test the Keythane stuff you need, well, Keythane. And, uh, but first, I'm, we're going to shoot up a small, small little station thingy here. We'll, we'll put it at 150 times 150, or Apo and Perry 150 because at that point we can um, we can um, actually time warp decently. So that's that's where I usually put them around 150. And let's just go around. And I think it's 150, or did I? Oh yeah, I'm just. Uh, oh yeah, no, that <laughs> that was actually a mistake, wasn't it? Or uh, am I just adjusting some? Oh, I'm just doing the final adjustments. Yeah, that, that's it. 150 times 150. Less than 500 meters away. That's cool. Opening up the shielded door to have a look at this. This is a really, really cool part from the B9 pa pack, actually. And uh, opening the stuff up there. Just checking everything is okay. Just fixing our inclination a bit. And we have three guys up here. And uh, now there is something missing from this thing. And, uh, well, we don't really have any live support on, support on it. Well, I do have some, of course, in uh, the capsule and, and stuff, but we don't really have any massive amounts, so we can't really put any anyone there up there long term. So, uh, for three guys, we have, I think, 600 units of food. That's, uh, well, that's a couple hundred hours. Should be, yeah. I think it's uh, it scales something like that. We'll uh, we'll have a look, but uh, no wait days. Oh well, yeah, we could still keep them there for a while. I want something that's long term though, but we still need some new parts. So, um, but first we need to add some stuff to the thing here to the core. So I, <laughs> by tradition, I of course called it the KSS, and uh, well, you could probably guess where the inspiration for that one is from now this thing that we're actually adding right now is um, something pretty simple it's basically just a set of girders and uh, and uh, well some solar panels and some batteries so this this is a power module now we'll fit one on each here and you can see I have some problems docking this thing I haven't done any real docking for a while and at station building it's been a while so it's kinda cool to play with that stuff again I, uh, I usually in every save I end up with a massive massive thing in orbit somewhere but uh, this save I really haven't had the infrastructure to keep people up there indefinitely. Now, um, one of the things we will get in the tech pretty soon is actually um, some uh, CO2 scrubbers and some water recycler thingies. Uh, so we'll put these up there, but we would need some more science points first to unlock them. But uh, So th this is a smaller version of what is to come 
basically. And what I want to use it for is I want to dock a bigger ship to this thing uh, and use it as like a central point where I, I know I have all the resources I need to temporarily dock something even if it's manned and doesn't have resources yet until I can actually assemble the whole thing and go out. Because I, I do like the approach we had to the Duna mission, uh, but I, I don't think the... Um, the <laughs> well, the way we did it wasn't that good. Um, if we had uh, done it more properly, done our research properly, it would be have been a great mission. We did fail horribly though. Oh yeah, so this is me actually seeing if I could, you know, try to land a bit closer. We were in a good spot, so why not just try it? And uh, I'm just doing some simple stuff here and seeing that I'm way off targets. So we'll just burn up and forward, just push our... Uh, uh, orbit a bit up there and then we'll start time warping down Have see if we could actually aim this thing and uh, this is a good exercise I like trying to hit the target uh, like this and it's uh, it, it is fairly just fairly hard to do and uh, as you can see we are coming in really really close but we are slowing down really quickly so uh, I basically decide to just pull out the shoots at 5k, no, 4, 3, oh, whoa, did I wait that long? Yeah, 2k. Oh, whoa, <laughs> that was a close one. I think I decided to get as close as possible, but um, you can see that that wouldn't have worked anyway. All right, so we are going to add uh, oh, yeah, another one of these because, well, I like symmetry and we're almost ready to dock that as well. You can see the thing starting to... They, starting to uh, get into shape here uh, the other one is really crooked there but I, I didn't pay attention to that because one of the things that we are going to put up here is a pretty heavy RCS tug used for construction in orbit which means that we could dock the individual parts in uh, to the station and then we could assemble them later and then send them off even though the craft we send itself isn't that easy to assemble. It, it's a bit extra for flexibility. Oh, and the hard docking attempt there. Oh, I think I ended up watching from one perspective for too long and I stopped paying attention to my indicators there. I will probably, uh, for next episode, add the, um, the extra navable stuff for the docking. docking indicators I think something like that right, you can see we are opening the solar panels for the first time having a look and see everything looks great now it's time to get some guys in there this is the first step so now the thing we have some life support up there we have electricity which we didn't have before so that means that we could actually put some guys up there for a while at least and uh, so we have two guys from each craft if I remember correctly yeah well I put two guys in there at least uh, I think I might have left the other guys out there and then oh yeah uh, I had to refinagle this thing I'm going to fix the other one uh, as well but uh, at this point it's not that important I think yeah I'm moving another guy over just swishing around here and, uh, oh, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, that's good. You're in. And this will probably be, uh, as you can see, the the launch vehicle we used for this will probably be the launch vehicle we use for most of our parts up into low carbon orbit. It has fairly high uh, delta v, uh, amounts of delta, delta V and thrust, and we could probably upgrade it with the mainsails after a while. Uh, so we could really push something big up there, because I, I, I end up dumping a half full uh, stack of tanks before I actually start using the small engine uh, uh, on the top there for circular, I say, or no, for rendezvous. Uh, okay, so yeah, we are done there, and the last piece of the puzzle here is, well, we need 
really need to find a source of keythane because when we're building a keythane miner we really 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 need somewhere to put it so we, we could actually test the mining and trying to test the mining the first time on Ike that was a mistake a big mistake trying it on Minmus well if it goes wrong we could just do it again because it doesn't take that much time we don't have to think about keeping anyone alive because one of the things I did not think about when I added life support stuff to this series is the fact that if you try to time warp like really fast to get the planets into alignment and you forget somebody with uh, insufficient supplies they die so you really really have to keep track of that stuff now I could add the Kerbal uh, alarm clock stuff and just well I, I could probably just um, uh, set up an alarm like a couple of days before or maybe a week before the last chance I have to actually get the people back home and that would probably be a good idea actually so yeah we have burned and we're ready for Ike no Ike my uh, Minmus <laughs> ah, so focused on Ike I'm still bitter now we want to get into a fairly high inclined uh, orbit like uh, around 90 degrees is the best but and um, we'll get somewhere perhaps between 150 to 200 kilometers away it doesn't matter that much we want to get high enough to be able to time warp but we need to be under 250 to be able to scan so I'm just trimming it there getting it back down and I love the flight engineer I'm trying to burn this down a bit earlier than I really have to because I'm afraid of losing contact here we don't have the most reliable satellite um, stuff up here I'm just going to go a bit further just trying to uh, get this stuff all right so we are in an orbit and then we actually lose contact <laughs> so that was a really really good call now I realigned this thing to just point to the earth or to Kerbin because well it's a 45 degree angle so we're good now um so we're just going to point point both the lunar relays uh, which shouldn't be planetary relays anymore because they failed uh, to this thing and then we should have coverage no matter what well unless minimus in, is in the way we probably need a couple more satellites up out there all right so we're burning it down and you can see the inclination is still really close and we can burn it up a bit more I think yeah that's the plan oh <laughs> I'm trying to figure out where to burn all right so we're burning this thing back up to around 200 that's uh, probably a good spot and we start scanning and as you can see we start detecting some ketane pretty early on so this was a success so let's see in the next episode if we could actually use it for something. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.